Brand New Man, I think, and Next Broken Heart were our first two number ones. By the time that third single, Neon Moon, came out, if you're playing that stuff live, they were loving it. And I'm like, okay, it's a freaking hit. Yeah. Hey, everybody, we're Brooks and Dunn. And this is the hit story of Neon Moon. Killed that. I know. Jesus. Watch it. actually wrote it. I think it's pretty cool that when we met, he'd already written that song along with Boot Scoot and quite a few other songs. I had been in Nashville, you know, writing songs like people do for other people. And uh, Ronnie was just writing songs for the dance floor and it served, uh, served our Brooks and Dunn thing uh, very well. I was very desperate and hungry. <laughs> yeah. I had a house band at Tulsa City Limits, which was a big host urban cowboy place. In the bar, they didn't care how good you were as long as people came to see you and you drank. So I was really thinking of dancing with the beats, and I still do to this day with most of the stuff that I, I write, and Kix and I both do. If they dance, they buy beer, you keep a gig. <laughs> Here we are, 35 years, 40 years later. 80 uh, years later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I close my eyes. Sometimes see you in the shadows of this smoke filled room. I guess Neon Moon, it's you know, it's a straight ahead kind of cool country lyric, but it's also got this sort of cowboy cha cha thing that people really like to dance to. I was trying to twist it just a, just a hair different and, and not give it like a, a good old standard, you know, two four beat. Uh, Deal and th that melody just just came to me. I just made those darn words up. Close your eyes. I close my eyes and sometimes see you in the shadows of this smoke-filled room. That lonesome feeling comes to my door and the whole world turns blue, 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 <laughs> blue. <laughs> That's actually a hard note for me to get. I could go higher. Blue, blue. <laughs> Blue. Uh, Boogie. Yeah. The first thing I learned and was taught when I got into the co-writing thing in Nashville was to always leave just a ray of hope, no matter how sad it is, leave just a ray of hope uh, out there at the end of the tunnel. It's got it, you know, he's like he's okay as long as he's, he's sitting under that neon light, listening to the music, probably falling in with the crowd and all that. So. Yeah, it's not sad. I mean, that's what you do if you break up with your girlfriend, you go sit in the corner and you look lonely. That's it. You know, that's that's just like having a hook in the water. Chicks dig Maybe it. the bobber will go down. <laughs> <laughs> Chicks dig a sad cow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're always nervous wrecks leaving the studio going, did we hook it? Did we get it? Is yeah. it too fast, slowed? Is it, did we cut it too high? The thing I remember is Ronnie had pretty much mapped this thing out. His his demo, we, we didn't even, even the guitar riff, we didn't change much. It had a loose feel, his demo did. It had a cool groove to it. We decided not to do a video intentionally. Sometimes that, that happens, and that's at the height of, you know, of, of music videos yeah. at the time. The second you see a video, it immediately robs your imagination from what you what you had going on between your ears, you know, and that's too much good imagery there to take it away. Some songs really cry out for, for videos and some don't. I still think that was a good call. I do too. We were at the Academy of Country Music Awards and the song was like in the top five or just slipping Went to number, number one, one. The week we yeah. won our first two awards at yeah. the ACMs. Yeah. Yeah. And Mike Dungan had a promotion at the time and Mark came up and told us, uh, he said, Neon Moon just went number one. It's a big deal. A big deal. Sing it, y'all. If you lose your one and only, it's always from here for the lonely. Sound better than we do. Watch it. Kind of a schmaltzy thing to do, you know, to stop and let the crowd sing. It's but not schmaltzy. You kind of <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? They like singing. I like hearing. It's them so sing. cool. Stop and uh, I don't let them let them sing it, and it's really a fun moment. And people ask us in interviews. They say, "What's the big thing you want you want to accomplish with a career?" And it's like, "Well, sustain longevity." Well, long after we're gone, those songs are going to be what what count. You look down at that set list. Some some nights when you're you're lost in the crowd and you go, oh, what's next? And and you see those those songs and you go, man, 
I never get tired of playing that. I, you know, it's always fun to see it come up again, to see the crowd light up like the first time they hear it, but you also see that look in their eye like, and this is something I've heard a million times, and this is the one I came to see. So, and it's really a fun moment. Yeah, we're after lucky all these they, years. They you know? know it. Yeah, because I don't know it, and they do. <laughs>